Welcome to Mooney Reads, um, and welcome to week two of Pride Month. Um, yesterday, I went to an uh, independent bookstore, local, women-owned, um, really great. They had um, a lot of really good Pride displays, a lot of really cool stuff going on, um, really all over. They have so many used books, but also a lot of really good, um, kind of diverse and some, like, queer-focused uh newer books as well. Um, they had a lot of cool stuff in their kids department. Sorry. <laughs> oh, look at him. Where are you going? Um, I wanted to show you all what I got while I was there. Um, using a Barnes and Noble tote bag. Um, but that's fine. So I went in there in order to get Mo Dear Mothman by Robin Gow. This is the same author who did A Million Quiet Revolutions. And I really loved that one. It made it to my favorites list last year. Um, and A Million Quiet Revolutions is a um, YA romance written in verse uh, between two trans men um and there's a a lot that they talk about with like queer history and stuff it's really good but dear mothman is a middle grade book by that same author i think that it's a little bit funny um i found robin gow's tiktok uh because uh faye was talking about dear mothman and kind of describing uh a lot of the stuff that led to Faye making the book. And I didn't even realize that this was the same author that had done A Million Quiet Revolutions. So I thought the premise of this book was so cool and it blew my mind a little bit to figure out that this is the same author. Um, so I was really glad that they had it. The other books that I ended up getting were Afterlife by Paul Monet, which I've been thinking about getting because of uh, kind of the deep dive into the HIV and AIDS history. Um, uh, my partner has a collection of his memoirs, um, but I wanted to read his fiction too, so I was happy that they had this, and then also saw that they had his poetry collection, which I don't even know that I knew that he had a poetry collection, or if I did, it's long since I've thought about it, so I'm glad that they had both of them, both used, both only like five dollars, so we love that. Um, and then the other book that I found was, um, God is Red by Vine Deloria Jr., um, which is, um, a look at religion, um, like theology through an indigenous lens. Um, I've heard of just a lot of really good stuff about this author in general. I haven't read any of, um, of their stuff at this point, but I also have, um, kind of a book list of... Uh, things around uh, theology, especially like, especially theology developed by different oppressed groups. And this is going to be a really great addition to that. Um, I really need to get back into those at some point. 
Um, but in the meantime, I found this. And again, a used copy, which is great. So that was my haul, plus free bookmarks. So that was my day yesterday. Um, today's going to be a lot of working, so I don't know if I'm going to read today or tomorrow. Um, because they're longer days, but if anything happens, uh, at least my camera will be the first to know. They caught you mid sniff. Catch you mid sniff. <laughs> Nasty kid. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> kid. It is March 11th now. I have not finished anything yet. The second week of Pride, but uh. The main goal that I have for today is to reach the halfway mark of real life. And I'm not really too far off. I'd say I'm about a third of the way through. Uh, maybe even a little more than that. And then after that, um, I think I want to try to get a ways into either Queer Horror or Man of the Night Sweats. I'm thinking probably queer core, just based on kind of how I feel right now. Um, I'm feeling more that than poetry, but you know, things could change. Anything could happen. Those are the plans for today. Um, I'm hopefully also going to be doing a little bit of baking later, so that'll be a cute montage or whatever. If I remember to do it, might not that's perfectly fine. Yeah, that's what I've got. Looks like a good stopping point at the halfway is closer than I thought. start the uh, nonfiction book on bisexuality today during the Tuesday reading hour um, and it's good so far I don't really have very many notes it's interesting very much up my alley if it had been written prior to like 2018 it definitely would be something I would have ended up having to cite in my thesis uh, so it's very much I'm very familiar with um, a lot of stuff like adjacent to it but I'm still also learning some new um, new things here and there I'm not really feeling reading right this second um, so I think I'm just gonna crochet outside at some point I might put on an audiobook uh, I, I, I don't know though I don't know we'll play it by ear and we'll see It is now June 15th, which makes it week three now. Weeks two and three might be in the same vlog, but that's fine. I've been reading quite a bit today. The short that I started is kind of coming along um, a bit. So I used all of the, oh, the rainbow like skein that I had, and then 
I'm adding this, which is going to kind of be on the bottom. And I realized that um, I used the same yarn to make a bunch of granny squares for a project. Only some of them were the same size. So I actually have a couple of them, at least, sitting around somewhere that aren't the right size for the project that I think I finished or, like, almost finished. Um, so I may unravel the ones that I'm not going to use and add to this before I decide to buy more. But this is, like, the bottom. Uh, and then I'm going to do, like, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. It is going to be, like, a crop situation I think but uh still definitely needs some more width um but I'm gonna like maybe add some to the top with the black and do um like the straps or sleeves or whatever um so there's that and this morning while I was crocheting I started the audiobook of a lot away which is a YA fantasy um with an asexual indigenous main character who can see ghosts um and has a dream about a recently passed um uh relative and uh he says that he's been murdered and then she kind of goes on to figure that out avenge that or make sure that the rest of the family doesn't get hurt it's pretty good so far um I don't have too many thoughts, necessarily, um, but uh, I definitely think that I'm going to be listening to that more while I crochet, um, but I also have gotten more into queer core, which I'm, it looks like I'm a little past halfway, but a lot of this is actually like reference and glossary, so I'm really about a third of a way from the end, and it wasn't until, like, I was already several chapters in, but less than halfway through, um, that I realized that there's actually a glossary that tells you who each of these people are, which would have been great to be referencing since the beginning of the book, uh, because one of my biggest grievances was that I don't know who half of these people are, um, without Googling them. Granted, the bios are very small. But I would at least have a reference. I still maintain that there should have been more of like a an introduction to each piece. Or like some sort of commentary. Just because like as much as, you know, you can get like some idea of who someone is from saying, oh, well, they were in this band in this state. Like, I would like a little bit more. Especially as they're talking about the political stuff in here. Um, and I know that it's hard because there are a lot of people, they're going to have a lot of different political prerogatives. Um, but so many people either, like, see their political prerogative in punk or queer core or put theirs, like, in what they make. But then there are also people who, like, I don't know if... I am taking the same thing that they actually mean when they say this, but there's somebody who even talks about them not wanting to be political in a certain way, um, which just, like, does not compute in my head. Um, especially with something like punk. Like, it's counterculture. It's... That part by itself is inherently political, and being so obviously outwardly unapologetically gay also has some sort of political tinge to it. So I don't know if they were meaning like like a political label like anarchist versus Marxist or what. However, the way that this is written is like there are different quotes from different people like pieces and some of them seem to be interacting with each other but some of them like it feels like they had multiple conversations with different people and then like took chunks out of each that fit certain themes and put it together that's at least how it reads to me and 
I do understand the benefit of categorizing and restoring part of their stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's still hard because I feel like I'm missing some context. Especially when people say certain things that seem really out of pocket, out of context. I'm like, I need more of an explanation. And as someone putting together something like a history or different, like, social science stuff, like, you know, there are pros and cons of different approaches. So I, like, understand why they made this decision. But I also think with it structured like this, I would have been even more of a reason to put, like, at least a small introductory thing to each chapter. Um, and I kind of get why they didn't on a certain level, and there's maybe some sort of punk, like, whatever from just giving it to you like it is, and if you don't like it or can't figure it out, fuck you, but... I don't really know that that was necessarily the intent, but I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I do like a lot of, like, I'm getting a lot out of some of what they're saying in terms of, like, understanding um, parts of the movement um, and also how it relates to other things. Like, I've been really interested in a lot of the stuff that they've said about the zines, um, which I was familiar with, like, feminist scenes, particularly in, like, second wave feminism, um, or I guess maybe, I don't think they were calling them scenes at that point, but, you know, like, independent publications, um, and then, uh, I was also kind of familiar with zines, um, like, riot girl scenes, and Kathleen Hanna is actually in this, uh, and they talk about Bikini Kill and... Um, a couple of other, like, riot girl groups that would have had overlap with queer core. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, yeah, that, the, that part is interesting to me. Um, and it was also neat when they did talk about, like, the impact of the AIDS epidemic and also the kind of relationship between queer core and ACT UP and queer core and, like, other parts of the gay community and also, like, the difficulties of, like, being punk or what have you when a lot of the gay community was like not with that sort of thing um and when there's a significant part of the punk community that was really homophobic so there's definitely interesting stuff in this book and I like that it was put together even though I have a lot of criticism it's kind of like sometimes the coolest stuff ends up being the stuff that I look a little bit too closely at I think or like crit critique more because it's like this thing is so cool and it's like so close to being like it's so close and it could have been more um so it's not that this is like penly bad or something like that it's got a lot of really interesting shit in it which is why I wish that it might have been done a little bit differently but I'm liking and understanding some of it the more that I read so Maybe I'll have a different perspective at the end. But I do like it. And I do find it interesting. I just... It's a little bit hard to follow if you don't have background in all of it. Which I even have a little bit of background in some of the stuff. Like I'm... You know, I know about the Riot Girl scene. And have read and watched some stuff on it. I'm familiar with ACT UP. And some other you know, organizations that would have been around that. Um, and I'm even familiar with, like, some of the bands and stuff that they mention, but it's still a little hard to follow. Anyways, that's my reading update for today. Um, or right now. Um, but I'm gonna finish doing stuff. Hey, it is the 17th, um, and I have a book haul. Uh, I'm pretty sure this particular week's vlog is going to start out with a book haul too. Um, but we went again to the same bookstore and it was really great. Um, definitely got a little bit more than last time. It is, um, mine and my partner's anniversary. So we decided to splurge a little bit or they splurged and got me bookies. So, um, I'll show you what I got. So, I'm going to start out with the new books that I got. Um, Fieldwork by Eliana Reagan, 
which I don't think that I've, I feel like I've maybe seen this on TikTok like once, but really I've mostly just seen it out on shelves and it's caught my eye multiple times. The cover's really cool and this is um, a memoir, the author's a lesbian, and this kind of talks about the COVID pandemic, which is a little bit like harsh, but it's also got to do with her like... I always do this when I, like, start to talk about stuff and then, like, have to stop myself and, like, redo some of it. Oh, always <laughs> same. Yeah. Or I never look up someone's, how to pronounce their name. Yeah. Listen to, like, five different YouTube videos and hear three different ways to do it. <laughs> and this is looking at the author's experience foraging, like, for mushrooms and across the land and stuff like that. Um, but it's, like, also... Um, I think she opened, I don't know if it was a restaurant or, uh, something a little bit more complicated than that, but it also talks about her experiences, like, during, um, like, the pandemic as well. So there's kind of a lot of different things happening in this, um, but it seems like a cool book. And then I think the only other nonfiction book that I got, I think, <laughs> um, is Gender Magic, Live Shamelessly, Reclaim Your Joy, and Step Into Your Most Authentic Self by Ray McDaniel, which is a book about gender by a non-binary uh, gender therapist. And they're kind of positing a new sort of way to think about gender. So another sort of like gender model that centers joy. Um, so that sounded like really cool this is uh, i think both of these i've been looking at as they've been sitting on the shelf for a while and today was just the day to get them and then i got quite a bit of fiction um i got the moth keeper which is k o'neill's most recent book um uh they did like the tea dragon society and um princess princess ever after and this is a little bit longer than those other ones and looks really cool and I got uh, Lillian uh, by Ntozaki Sanjay. She also did for Colored Girls Who Considered Suicide, which I read earlier this year and had a really good time with. Uh, I was able to watch the movie and stuff too. I think I did that during a vlog. Possibly, maybe. Maybe not. It was a really good time. And so this one is a novel, but it also looks like it's written in a more... Um, kind of creative way because it's almost like she wrote this as like somebody doing like a, like a, an ethnography on the character or something like there are interviews with other people in her life so that's pretty cool and I got Bailey's Cafe by Gloria Naylor The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison I got Tracks by Louise Erdrich who, um, I've been meaning to read some of her stuff. I think I started an audiobook a while back, and it was interesting, but just one of those times where I kind of dropped a book for no real reason, so, um, I grabbed this because it was one of the older books of hers that they had, um, so hopefully that'll be good, and I got Maps by Nuruddin Farah, and... Aphrodite, the memoir, a memoir of the senses by Isabel Allendale. So I spent the whole time filming this, uh, saying Isabel Allende's name wrong because my brain always puts an L at the end of her name for no discernible reason. Um, so that's annoying and will unfortunately continue until I'm done with the book haul. Um, who is another person that I've not picked anything up by, but has, like, seen her books a lot of places. This one looks really interesting. And it's another one where it's, like, really, like, the way that it's written looks really interesting. So, like, there are pictures in here, but also recipes. I'm just gonna read a piece of the blurb because, I mean, I, obviously I haven't read it, so I don't know how to talk about it, but 
It just seems really interesting. Elizabeth Allendale brings her magical storytelling powers to a highly personal and charmingly idiosyncratic look at, at the intertwined sensual arts of food and love, blending personal reminiscence with folklore from around the world, historical legends, and mem memorable moments from literature, erotic and otherwise. Allendale spices her narrative with equal portions of humor and insight. So, some of this actually is memoir, and then it's got a lot of extra stuff to it, though. That is what I got at the bookstore, and I actually have an extra three, because Brent found other versions of books that they had that they liked better, um, and I happily took the versions that they didn't want. Um, another Elizabeth Allendale book, uh, Daughter of Fortune. Even Cowgirls Get the Blues by Tom Robbins. And The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. That's about it as far as the books go. I was able to get this really cute bag to go with all of them. Really, Vintage has such cute, like, other stuff outside of just books. Um, this was just one of the things. They also have, like, socks and a lot of, like, kitchen towels that are really cute. Um, but this is the one that I walked out with today. I finished The Man with the Night Sweats. Wow. So I knew going in basically that this, you know, was about the AIDS epidemic in some capacity. This was published in 1992. Um, I looked up some things about the author and while he didn't have AIDS, uh, he was gay. He was in the community, born in Britain and moved to San Francisco and was and it, it's not important which art movements he's a part of at the moment, and I honestly couldn't recall totally, but this collection is very much about community and connection and what it was like being in community or witnessing community at this time, and wow. I mean, there are definitely, with every poetry collection, there are some that you like better than others, and that's kind of like moot. To me a little bit especially after reading the whole thing and then thinking about how it all comes together there are four chapters uh that have you know a collection of poems within each and the first part is about the like experiencing connection like on an individual level stuff about like one-on-one -on -one things with like um romance or friendship um or isolation oftentimes a combination um in general, the whole collection, I, it ranges from melancholy to depressing, uh, for the most part, understandably. And then, uh, so the first part is about individual connection. The second part is actually only one poem long and speaks, I guess, volumes about the collection in general, but especially about where the kind of last two chapters are going to go. Part three I think is a like each each poem is a like focusing kind of on a different person um or things that you could observe like in a town uh so some are about particular people or particular places kind of um giving us the setting um but I think also shows certain things about um kind of parts of the disconnect like you know you have some people who are like living their life and then other people who are suffering it was kind of interesting because the first part of this uh or the first few poems in this third chapter were more focused on animals um and, like animals being used as a like i guess metaphor for different things but it's interesting just or one of the reasons why it like caught my attention was just because we start out with these poems that are about animals but are really about people um and then you get into poems that are more literally about people and places and then in the fourth chapter which focus more on this person's inner circle and actually in the acknowledgments he points out which ones are about what people um it's much more pointed, um, in literal and 
I guess maybe grounded in some ways. All that is to say this is a really good collection, not just in, you know, an individual poem or, uh, you know, something like that, but like as a collection, as a whole, it's, um, it flows together really well and it's, uh, like, a it, it builds, like, as a collection, it is solid and it paints a really coherent, um, picture. I feel like that really scratches the surface. I don't really know. And I feel like talking about this, uh, sounds very clinical, but it's hard to know what to say with something this intense, I guess. But yes. It was very good. Hopefully this update has something coherent in it because I feel like I'm just talking and maybe still processing what I've just read, but I'll probably be picking up one of the lighter books that I have. All right. It is the 27th. Um, it's been a minute since I've checked in. Uh, I started um abolition democracy during the reading hour today and it's so far so good it's set up more like interviews so it's probably closer to freedom is a constant struggle um in terms of format i don't really have too much to say so far i kind of wish that it was my copy and not the library copy because <laughs> i really want to highlight and stuff in it but uh yeah it's been a minute since i've checked in i'm about to go to the library um and bring back a few things I'm not going to be able to finish by which I started um because somebody has a hold on it so I'm going ahead and returning taking turns in the okay witch sequel as well as life as a unicorn because I just don't think I'm gonna get to it right now um so it's best that I return it and then just check it out again later I did want to talk a little bit about what's happened the past little while just because I <laughs> it's a hard stuff to talk about. I could have just closed out the vlog as if it were stopping before all of this stuff happened, but it just felt wrong or bad or whatever. Um, so if you do want to skip talking about hard stuff, uh, go to that timestamp, um, to see library shenanigans. Um, but I guess content warnings for pet loss, um, uh, maybe discussion about grieving, like, people, too. Remy's health declined pretty suddenly. Um, sometime last week. I mean, she had, like, a laundry list of health problems, but we were managing them really well. Um, you know, like, everywhere that I brought her was like, wow, what cat was seizures? And, um, you know, we've managed them for nine years. And then on top of hyperthyroidism the past few, and, uh, then kidney disease kind of starting in the background but um the doctor suspected that she had lymphoma that was hanging out she stopped eating but she was 15 14 or 15 we don't really know so she lived a long time longer than she would have with a lot of other people just with all of those things and her bladder crystals too and <laughs> she was going through it but we were doing the best we could i feel like i've had a lot of thoughts and i kind of wanted to share some of them but i don't really know if talking is going to be the best format, just because of how I am as a person. Um, but it's, you know, in the beginning of my last video, I talked, or at least the last vlog, I might, might put up another video by the time this one comes out. Um, I talked about how I didn't really want to talk about the break that I had, um, because it's hard stuff. Um, uh, but I think that Remy dying has also brought up a lot of, like, the, like, somatic like feelings of grief that I haven't processed um my stepdad passed away at the beginning of April and it feels wrong not to mention something like that um just like it feels wrong to not mention Remy who's like in the videos and stuff like that I don't know I've been thinking about so much but it's hard to articulate but I think that happening so recently made the process of grieving for her that much more difficult because of those you know I did mental processing but I don't think I did the physical processing I 
I'm a Pisces. <laughs> Follow me, I promise this is leading some this is going to lead somewhere, not just abstract um astrology shit, but I'm a Pisces, so I'm naturally a crier. Uh but I'm also have an Aquarius moon, which means that like vulnerability and emotion is like I try to like be contained, I guess. Or that's like my automatic is to just shove things. Um so like I could cry over a dog video and like talk about that pretty freely, but when it comes to something that's actually vulnerable, it's much harder. So I guess that's something not just to work on, but it's just something that is and you know, I like the idea of actually being able to talk freely about stuff just in general and um so I guess that's maybe why I'm putting this in here, but um and also to kind of explain how you know I think losing a pet is always hard but you know first of all she was special and like so much of my life revolved around her it's more complicated with a recent person death and then my granddad who died in 2018 a lot of stuff around his is traumatic um you know he took care of her and paid for a lot of her stuff needless to say there's a lot of processing happening um, but I didn't want to just act like nothing was going on because that's my default is to do that. So we're having a little moment here. Um, uh, but we're going to go to the library. I say we, it's literally just me. Um, I'm going to go to the library and return in some books, do a little bit of browsing since I have some time. Um, and hopefully it will be nice. The chances of me finishing some of the books that I'm working on currently are slim, at least at the moment. Like, I started a lot, so a ghost dogs, I, I think I'm going to have to put that down. Um, I do want to finish Queer War. What else am I reading? I started by, but I can't finish that. I probably am in the middle of something else that I'm really enjoying and forgetting about it, but... My brain is made out of Swiss cheese and has been for months, um, arguably years, but <laughs> anyways, it's been harder the past little bit, but we're going to go to the library, um, and it's going to be a good time. Okay, I have returned from the library. I got a little bit of footage while in there, but I get like overly concerned, I think, sometimes um, trying to film in public. Um, but I picked up a few things that none of this was pre planned. Um, I occasionally go in the library with like a half baked idea of a couple of things I could grab, but most of it is vibes. And this time it was a lot more vibes <laughs> heavy. Um, uh, they had some really good pride displays, which was really cool. Um, it was neat to see, like, from the last time I went in there, what displays they'd kind of rotated, and, um, there were lots of, like, summer read things, and, um, all of that, but, um, and I also get to see what pride things they recommended. They have these, and it looks like they have some good ones. I've heard a lot of good things about Man of War, actually. <laughs> I think I have an e arc for it. I am, like, the worst at reading arcs. Um, Light from Uncommon Stars. Last Night at the Telegraph Club is really good. But really, they've got 30 Names of Night, which was also on their display, is on here. There's really nothing that I've seen on here that is, like, bad or like you know not a great like this is actually a pretty good list anyways not that anybody asked but i got love after the end an anthology of two spirit and then did queer speculative fiction by joshua whitehead i've seen quite a few people read this and i've um you know thought about it but i haven't gotten to it and um now i have this copy um, I might, um, this is going to be one that I read sooner rather than later because there are no renewals, um, 
and the rest of the stuff, uh, unless there's a hold on it, I can renew it. Um, Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter is doing uh, an Indigenous Summer readathon, so this might be good for that. I do have a couple of picks of like stuff that I own, but um, this is going to be good for that too. And actually, this also will be too. Um, the Woman Who Fell from the Sky by Joy Harjo. I read mm, American something. I don't remember the title, but it was very good. Um, so I'm looking forward to this one. I like that the cover is very, like, I don't know if that's 90s or, yeah, 94. Okay. Um, so uh, hopefully that'll be good. I also picked up, in terms of poetry, Goldenrod by Maggie Smith. Um which I've heard some good things about The Factory by Hiroko Oyamata, um, which is a pretty short book. It looks like it's a kind of a meditation on modern like workplace culture slash maybe capitalism. It's uh, been translated from Japanese. Literally never heard anything about it, but it sounded interesting. Um, and I was kind of looking for shorter books because I think that's just the current kind of vibe. Um, I also got Meet Me Behind Mars, which is a short story collection. It doesn't really have a description on the back. It's just blurbs, which is always like a little bit frustrating to me. But I read the Goodreads description. Um, and it seems like it's a short story collection that's also kind of a meditation on place and ancestry and some other things. Um, so hopefully it'll be good. And then I also picked up Understanding the Enneagram by Don Richard Russo and Russ Hudson. I have um, the wisdom of the Enneagram that I've read and really liked and it's been a minute since I've looked at Enneagram stuff so like maybe I'll look at this. We'll see. So that's the library haul. Um, I'm not sure what my reading plans the rest of the day are going to be. Um, I would like to do house stuff and probably won't listen to an audiobook during that. But whenever I do get some time to hopefully read outside for like a little bit, I would like to read more of Abolition Democracy because I really think I can finish this in a couple of days. And that is going to be all for my Pride reading vlog. Um, I did film a little bit more, but it just would have been, like, it's not enough for its own vlog, but, like, too much to keep going on this over 30 minute now long vlog. Um, and I didn't make a proper ending for it anyway, so I'm gonna stop there. Overall, I think that I got to some pretty cool stuff in June. Definitely had a really good time, um buying books and borrowing books from the library during June too. Um, so in the comments, let me know about your favorite read of Pride Month. Um, and thank you all so much for watching. Bye.